neat. Uh, <laughs> watching the kids. He's got the whole world in his hands. Especially Addison. <laughs> you know, like they say around here, I have, I have uh, three girls and an Addison. And uh, she is a trooper. She was over here, you know, just to go into town. And, uh, thank you so much for that, Emory, Ms. Carolyn. Excellent job. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And um, that's one of, that was one of our favorite songs to sing with the kids, with the children's ministries. We got the whole world. And we got to watch that. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It's something special tonight. And, and once again, thank you for the hard work that you put into practicing. They didn't, they started practicing. Now, they planned on doing this before Christmas. So they practiced several weeks, and then just things came up, and they couldn't do it. And, and uh, so I said, but we're still, co we're still coming to do this. So once again, thank you so much again for that. Luke chapter 9 tonight. Luke chapter 9. <coughs> you would stand for reading God's word. <coughs> Forgive me, I'm trying not to cough. I think it's probably worse for me than actually just coughing. Uh, Luke chapter 9, beginning of verse 23. to them all. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? If any man will come after me, Tonight we're going to look at a, a topic, more of a topical sermon tonight. Uh, the Lord laid it on my heart the other night, uh, Friday night, and I'll get more into that in a minute. But just entitling it, Following the Little Green Arrow. We'll just leave it at that. Father, sure need to tonight. I pray that you just uh, you take away uh, this cough for a matter of moments. And uh, Father, take away the thoughts that I have and fill me with your thoughts that we may leave. Uh, with a, a direction, with something to, more in, uh, definitive on what we're following. And God, may we leave here changed because of your word tonight. Sure love you and thank you for loving us first. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. <coughs> Question here. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. In the technology age we live in, many times we find ourselves relying so heavily on it, speaking of technology, that we can't live without it. Uh, we have forgotten how to do some of the things we used to do. Uh, and many times I'll, somebody will ask me a, something to add something up, and I immediately reach for my phone instead of trying to think. Uh, and, and we find ourselves forgetting how to do some of the most simple things. Because technology is kind of taking that over and we're using it more. I was at somebody's house the other day. I saw this black box on the wall with this kind of spiral cord on it, hooked at both ends. One to the box and one to this handle looking thing. It had this funny looking clock on the front of it. But the numbers didn't go the same way. You tell me what I'm talking about? Telephone. telephone. Had this old antique telephone hanging on the wall. And it had the, you know, the dial on the front of it. Had the handle that sat on the top of it. And uh, my first question was, does it work? <laughs> they're like, oh yeah, the ringer works. But it's not hooked up. And they're like, we don't, yeah, I know, that's a crime, isn't it? That's also, um, but yeah, they tested the ring and everything, and, uh, but it was a real one. Yesterday, as I was out with my girls, doing some birthday shopping for my wife, Emma and I laughed because there was a car next to us. Where you at, Emma? Remember that car next to us? With that huge phone mounted to the front window? And us laughing about it? This girl was driving this car, it's a real small car, it's not a big car. 
And uh, she had one of those, they call them phablets, by the way. It's like a phone and a tablet combined. Spell that one, let's see. And, you know, she's like, what? It's a big phone. Um, but a phablet, and, it, and she had it mounted to this thing that sucks into the window. And it was like this long, so it came up, and it sat like right here in front of her. I thought, well, if that isn't distracting, you know, don't text and drive. Well, you know, anything that comes up on my screen, she's not going to be able to ignore it. It's right in front of her. But uh, obviously, we, we ended up making a few jokes about that, you know, as we drove down the road. Uh, but today, there, there may be a few that are not tied down to a device like many of us. I call mine my electronic leash. I can't, you know, I can't get out from under, can't get away from it. Um, it kind of it ties us down. Uh, but today, there may be a few that are not tied down to device, but most, but most, even our little kids today. Let me give you an example. Our little niece, Sadie. She comes over, and she, I mean, just excited to be over at our house. She comes running in the front door and uh, angrily sitting there uh, on the chair, leather chair in our, our living room. And she goes, me, 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 me. I watch Mickey Mouse. That's all she says. I watch Mickey Mouse. Peace. And that's what she says. And before Amy, that's me, before me could say anything, Sadie already has uh, my wife's phone in her hand. And she pushed the button, she slid it to unlock it, she scrolled over several pages to where Mimi has apps saved for her. I don't have any apps on her phone, but she say he does. And she punches it, she turns it sideways, and hits the video and starts watching the videos. And most of us are going, I'm having problems just keeping it charged, much less finding another app. Well, it's, it's a little different these days. With technology and the kids, they're it's surrounding us. And they're growing up with it. Now, many think that it's weird. And how, how do they know to do such that, that kind of stuff at a young age? They're growing up with it. It's surrounding them. It's all around them. We drove by a restaurant this morning, and my daughter goes, well, why would you have an iPad that big that you can't touch? It was just a screen. It's an order screen. <laughs> but so as I was, as we were Friday night, what brought all this up? Let me just get to the matter because I'm going to die here. I'm just going to wither away. Friday night we're driving, and uh, we we did a a whirlwind trip on Friday. We drove to to Sylvania, Georgia, Friday afternoon. Late afternoon, and drove back Friday, at, Friday evening. And uh, uh, Sylvania is right outside of uh, Savannah, Georgia, uh, about 45 minutes from Savannah. We drove down and we drove back. And uh, don't ask, just leave it back. On the way, we used GPS. Now, we've been there before, but we used the GPS on our phone. <laughs> and, uh, you know, what did we do? Follow the little green arrow. Well, you know, yours maybe yellow, blue. Ours is, you know, it was green. And so uh, after the party, we drove back. Don't ask. We used the same GPS, but we got to an intersection that we knew we had just turned at, coming down, and it took us a totally different direction. Well, it had the same destination for you. But we took a different direction. But can I tell you, we followed the little arrow on the screen. We didn't blink an eye at it. We just, okay, so let's go straight instead of turn. Here we go straight. We followed that arrow on the screen. We slowed down when a turn was coming. We stopped, I almost stopped several times in the middle of the road, when we thought I had missed something. If we had missed a turn, we would immediately turn around and come back. We followed that little arrow as if our lives depended on it. Now, did our lives really depend upon it? No. I mean, we could have 
logistically got back. But isn't it amazing if you get a GPS out or you get something, somebody's maps, uh, thing, uh, information out, they give you directions? Go down to the red barn and turn right. Look for the big oak tree with a cow under it, turn left. And you live and you die by those directions. I mean, you don't, but you just, you're going to follow those directions. But to follow that little arrow, follow that little arrow, there are some simple principles. First off, we had to know our target destination. We had to know where we are going. <coughs> we had to verify that destination. In other words, you punch in the address, and it pulls it up on a screen, and then it says, are you sure this is where you want to go? Well, when I first left the house, I said, I'm not sure I want to go there. But we're going anyway. So I hit it. And I confirmed the destination. And then I had to just simply trust that, you know what, that little green arrow was going to get me there. I was going to follow that little green arrow all through this map on my phone, and it was going to get me to where I was going. So then, number four, just simple principles, following GPS, you have to follow it. You have to do what it says. Now let's just stop here for a minute. What was the reference I said? If, if, if any will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily. Follow me. You know, it's amazing. We'll follow all sorts of things that are around us. And we follow that little green arrow all night. And I mean, without question. I mean, don't get me wrong, I didn't ask the question, well, why didn't we turn again? But you know what? I didn't make me still turn. I still went straight. I followed the arrow. Why is it that I have such a hard time following my Savior like I follow that little green arrow? Why do we have problems? When God's word says this, yet yeah, we want to do this. Look, I didn't back talk that little green arrow. I didn't come up with my own idea of how I was going to get home. I simply followed the little green arrow. When we follow the little arrow, we follow. We may ask questions like we did. Why are we going a different direction? But we dare not go a different way. It's when I think I can go a different direction that I find myself going right back to the little arrow and say, oh, now where do I do? Now where do I go? Or about the end, it starts chirping. Please turn around when possible. Please turn around when possible. Y'all haven't heard that before, have you? No. Psalm 25, verse 5 says, Lead me in thy truth. And teach me. For thou art the God of my, of my salvation on thee, who I wait all the day. See, these same thoughts, the same, uh, the same way I was following that GPS on my phone. Man, what kind of, what kind of um, challenge was that to me spiritually in my following? You see, because I, I was trusting that this phone, this device, this GPS was going to get me home. And I wasn't going to question where that little green arrow went. How many times it turned, it didn't matter. I was going to follow it. You know, it's amazing. One of the things that I've noticed about myself, now my dad has driven highways for years. He knows about every back road you can think of between here, Alabama, South Carolina, North Carolina. Florida, you name it, he probably knows it. Or he can tell you, you know, there have been many times I was I was misplaced, in other words, I was lost. <laughs> and I would say, Dad, where am I at? He'd tell me exactly where I was and how to get back to where I needed to go. But I, and, and I, I studied that and I learned to do that quite well. But now I've gotten to where I'm brain dead. I follow that little green arrow and I have no clue where I've been. And that's what happened on Friday night. 
I have been that group many times. But because I followed that little green arrow, I didn't have to think about what was going on. I just had to follow the little green arrow. Let's get back to some practical applications in our spiritual lives tonight. Jesus said, if any will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Let's look back a minute. We were talking about the GPS. We've got to have our target destination where we're going. Look, as, as Christians tonight, we have a target destination. We know where we're going. I, I desire as a Christian to do God's will for my life. I desire to serve him with all that I am. Knowing one day that I'll spend eternity with him in heaven. But along the way, there's going to be a lot of turns. There's been a lot of turns that I haven't expected over my lifetime. Turns where we were missionaries to Michigan. Yeah, I said missionaries. Uh, living up north, we were missionaries to the north. This is what we call ourselves. But, you know, things that we just didn't expect. Lefts and rights. We know our destination. Verify the destination. Proverbs 16, 25. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You know, there's a lot of times that my the destinations that I would choose for myself weren't the right ways. They weren't the right path. They weren't the right turn. I said so many times, I get on that phone, I mean, I am just trusting that device to get me there. We've got to simply trust the arrow that we get there. Psalm 31, verse 3, for thou art my rock and my fortress, the scripture says. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. We're talking about so much more than just a GPS. So much more than just an arrow on a page that's kind of tripping the road for us. We are talking about <coughs> we are talking about Following God Himself. You know what He promises that He'll guide us. He promises that He'll lead us. In John 16, 13, howbeit when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. For He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak. Speaking of the Holy Spirit, that God will send to us our comforter. He would guide us and direct us. Now, for us as Christians, we recognize these things. But I want to stop and I want us to think about three principles for us. As Christ says, if any will come after you remember there were some disciples that he said what to him? He said what? Follow me! I was looking at that this afternoon and thinking about that. In fact, it, he just simply said, follow me. He didn't do anything. You know, it wasn't some grand crowd following him already. He told them to Drop the nail on the other side of the boat and they pull up a drowned fish. That's about it. He just said simply, follow me. To follow him, to come after him, as the Bible says in our scripture tonight. They will come after me. <coughs> they will come after me. No, notice what it says, number one. Let him what? Deny himself. For me to follow, I must first forsake everything else. I've got to forsake everything else. <clears throat> Peter and Simon, when Jesus Christ said, Come follow me, what did they do? They dropped their nets, they left their boat, they left the men fishing, they left it all and began to follow him. I mean, that was their means of supply for, their, for themselves, for their, their families, for 
those around them. They left it all. They didn't look back. For us to say tonight, uh, to, if you will, follow, the, follow God as we ought to. to uh, going back to our illustration, follow the little arrow. We must forget. We must forsake that we think we know. And simply follow. I got to first forsake things. See, if I don't forsake, in other words, to put them off, to cast them off, as if not important to me, to throw them, if you will, away. If I don't, then there's, I'm always going to be tied down to something. And when any time we're tied down to something, it's kind of like this morning, we won't give all, will we? We must forsake. He says, the man will come after me. Let him deny himself. That's more than just things. That's all of his wants, all of his desires, everything that's in him that says, hey, I want, I want, I want. He said, deny yourself. For us to follow, to truly follow God as we ought. And can I tell you, there's peace in following God as we ought. Just like me following that dumb little green arrow, I would literally lose thought on what, where we were going or what road we were on. Why? Because I was just following the arrow. I didn't have to think about what road I was on. I didn't have to think about what name it was. I didn't have to think about whether it was going east, west, north, or south. I just had to follow it. Can I tell you there's peace in following God? Not having to worry about things. Letting him take care of it. Yes. As he says, follow me. But number one, we've got to the first off, we've got to forsake everything else. Did not, up to denying ourselves, our own desires, our own wants. Number two, secondly, we must fully commit. Fully commit. What does it say? We must, uh, if anyone will come after me, let him what? Deny himself and do what? What's number two? Take up his cross daily. If anyone will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. Literally taking up uh, the the. The cross is a picture of suffering. It's a picture of, of, uh, of what Christ was about to do <coughs> for my sins and yours. He's going to take everything upon himself. Christ was fully committed to go to the cross for me. Yes. We must, if we're going to truly follow God as we ought to, to follow our Lord and Savior, I'm going to fully commit. That kind of goes back to number one, where I deny it and I forsake everything else. Because I don't want to be tied down to anything that would keep me from following him. But going back to those disciples, they, they forsook it all. They committed everything. That's why at the end when Christ had died, and they were in the upper room and they had no clue what to do. That's why... It, as humans, they were probably so um, so upset because they had committed themselves and forsaken all. Because remember what they say, now what do we do? Christ had told them, but they said, now what do we do? We must fully commit. No matter what. What does he say? Take up his cross daily. Fully committed every day. I'm in. I'm in, Lord. No matter what happens, I'm in. Uh, this picture of the cross. The fact that Christ would take that upon himself for me. 
I should be willing to take it upon myself for him. But I want, I desire to follow him completely. Yes. To follow him completely, I've got to forsake everything else. Denying myself and taking up his cross, fully committed. And then number three, tonight, keeping my eyes, keeping our eyes only on him. Keeping my eyes only on him. When we look at this, <coughs> we look at this passage, and he says in, in verse 23, he says, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And this is a simple message tonight. But notice he didn't say follow this, this, and this, and this, and this. He didn't say follow uh, John the Baptist. To follow me. Remember he said, I am the way and the truth and life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Jesus says, keep our eyes. You remember when Peter was walking on the water? Y'all remember that? As they're out at sea, middle of the night, fourth watch of the night, and uh, the, the waves were crashing and hard, and all of a sudden they see what they say is a spirit walking them on the water, and they call out, and, and Jesus Christ, it, it's him himself walking them on the water. And Peter says, if it be you, Lord, let it come out to you on the, on the sea. Let it walk out to you. He just simply says, come. Peter steps out of the boat, puts his feet on that water, and I'll, for some reason it's a little firmer than he remembered it being. A little bit more secure than he remembered it being. He steps out and begins walking with Jesus Christ, and it says that when he began to look around, and he began to see the waves and the wind and, and all this going on, that he began to sing. <coughs> it's when he took his eyes off of Jesus Christ, whom he was supposed to be following, walking to, that he began to sing. Right. Can I tell you, there's a lot of things in our lives, as we're following God, that are there, whether we put them in the way, or God allows them in the way, or Satan puts them in the way, to take our eyes off of Christ so that we begin to lose faith in him and begin to not follow Christ that we ought to follow. We must keep our eyes on him. So we just back. <clears throat> if any man It's an if statement. It's a question. If any man. God didn't say it's going to be easy. In fact, he says, it's to, you know, he kind of explains it. It's going to be difficult. He says, if any man will come after me. I wonder how many of us have truly followed like we ought to. See, that's how it that's how it came, and that's how that's kind of what God asked me the other night. Maybe because I was delirious and being tired, or you know, I've seen spots because of the green arrow, I don't know. But it's almost as if God asked me, Keith, do you follow me like you follow a little green arrow on my GPS? I mean, that arrow tells you to turn right, and you turn right. You don't ask any question. <laughs> it tells you to go through this little city that's got a 25 mile an hour speed zone, and you feel like you're crawling, but you don't question why you're going through it. 
He tells you to get on a freeway and head what seems to be the opposite direction. And you don't question it. But when I tell you to do something, when I tell you to do something, you follow me like you follow that little thing now. Tonight, do you follow God? Most of us, the honest answer is no. We have our own ideas about things. We have our own thoughts about things. We have too many this, too many that, too many, uh, too many bills, too many uh, requirements, too many, too many other things going on. Lord, I, I can't just do that. Keith, I told you to go right. But, but Lord, it's just not the right timing. So Keith, you'll follow that little green arrow. And you'll trust in that little green arrow more than you'll trust in the God who made you, who created you, who gave you life, who gives you life. If any man will come after me, Christ says. No one let him deny himself, let him forsake all things. Let him deny himself. Let him fully commit. Take up his cross daily. Keep his eyes on me and follow me. Maybe there's things going on in your life tonight. There's things that God has been speaking to you about, directions that God has been driving, trying to get you to go towards. I don't know. Decisions you've got to make. And you've questioned every step of the way. Ask you the question God asked me. You follow that little green arrow more than you follow me. My answer on Friday night would have been Miss Sergey. What would your answer have been? Maybe tonight we would have a change of mind. And make this choice to follow him the way we ought to follow him. Tonight, Matthew chapter 9, verse 23, he said unto them, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take his cross daily, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man at advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? Tonight I choose to follow better than I follow that little green arrow. I pray that would be your choice tonight as well. Whatever you got on that close. Tonight a simple message. It wasn't very deep. I pray it was very practical. Because there's going to be decisions that are need to make, be made tonight in your life, tomorrow in your life, this next week in your life. There's going to be decisions that have to be made. And with those decisions, I pray that the question will come to your mind, do I follow God more than I follow 
Go a little over here. I desire for God to look at me and say, you know what? You're following me better than that little green arrow. I've got to deny, I've got to forsake all things. I've got to fully commit. I've got to keep my eyes on him. Tonight, it's, a, it's not above our heads. It's not just practical. Those are things we can do individually to follow him as we ought to follow him. Tonight, would you choose with me to follow him? Every head bowed and every eye closed. Let's stand to our feet. Tonight, do you know Christ as your Savior? Do you know Him as your personal Lord and Savior? If you don't know Him tonight, I'd like to invite you. We have a, an old fashioned invitation. In just a moment, the piano will play. The mom will begin to sing. And we invite you to come down to this altar. Let us take God's Word and show you from God's Word. How you can know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Christian, tonight, <coughs> are you following him? Better than you follow the leader. God.